Visibility is vital for you to be able to stay top of mind. Your reputation, yes, but build on it. Don't bury it. Let people know. If they don't know, it's only because you haven't shared that with them or certainly shared it with them recently. Say something. Use your voice. How is it that you have 20 years of experience and then you come and tell me, I don't have anything important to say? God, no, please get some, get some thought leadership out there. And thought leadership isn't like all haughty, okay? People who write books also, by the way, are thought leaders. People who are on podcasts, thought leaders. But anything, anything, even if it's a slow start, don't even sweat about it. You can do this. You can absolutely do this. And you must do it. Yeah, I am saying that because you have, if you are looking to earn a seat at the table, no better time to start. Sit at your own table, bring your own meal, grab a couple chairs. Let's go. The idea of job security is outdated as a landline. If you haven't been in a search for a while, it's probable you will at some point by choice or not. Most executives admit to staying way too long or sense what's coming and justify staying anyway. Here, there's another reason. The faulty belief that navigating to what's next will inevitably be worse and has to suck. Screw that. Lauren Greif has spent a lifetime in corporate and executive search, calling bullshit on stale career advice that most still use. This is Career Blast in a Half. The career podcast for executives ready to cut past outdated career advice to fuel your outcomes now. So let's go. I've never had to look for a job before. This is the statement, the declaration, the complete admission that comes with more than 80% of the executives that I speak to at their prospect stage. I'm questioning, is that a badge or a boulder? Is that a triumph or a trap? And the reason why I ask myself this question, and maybe it's something that you want to ask yourself, is because on the upside, the badge side, what this is maybe reinforcing, whether it's for your ego or also just as a, as a great reminder, is that you are marketable and you have been marketable and people have sought you out over and over and over again, whether it was moving internally, whether it was working with a recruiter, whether it was being referred by a friend. And those are positive signs. So hang on to that, right? Because that feels good. And we want you to feel good in your search, always. The downside of that is that if you haven't been in a search and you don't know what it's like to be in a search, you may be ill-equipped to understand how it works today. So on the upside, yeah, you have a lot of skills and that's great. On the downside, though, this could really be a treacherous road. And here's why. First and foremost, what you did before, it's probably not going to work. It's probably not going to work. Now, I'm not going to say it won't work because I'm not sure exactly what you're doing, but from my experience in speaking with executives all the time, it's a bit of a rude awakening. So I'm going to rip off the Band-Aid And then I'm going to give you some salve for it. The competition, you know it and I know it. It's never going away. Ageism, what do I say? It's alive and well. And also, the resume, as great as it is, that six seconds that somebody is looking at it, isn't really what's going to secure you that relationship or that opportunity. Those are cost of entry. 
And so is your quote unquote, 20 plus years of experience and all those cliches that we hear, you know, proven track record, seasoned professional, goodbye. What I do want to emphasize is that now, and yes, I will say more than ever, remind yourself that you are so good at your job, but that doesn't guarantee you are great as a job seeker or somebody on the market. And that's okay. Trust me. There are nobody comes out of the womb thinking that they are a master at navigating an ever changing marketplace with advents like AI or other social media pieces or networking or storytelling. All of those are learned skills. So you are in the right place and there's nothing that you can't learn. Additionally, what I really want to focus on today is that there is a unique opportunity to do this differently. Because if you keep reinvesting in what has been done before, it's not, it's not effective and it's certainly not time efficient. And your time is worth more than you want to outsource any of those tasks that you cannot do. So don't pretend that you're Michael Jordan on the basketball court if you are not familiar with dribbling and drills. Find the who that can get you to the place that you want to go. Find the resume writer. And I have a million to share with you if you, if, if you want. I can absolutely send you the best of the best. Find the coach, and I'm not, this is not a plug for me. Find the person who will get you to where you need to go. And this also, this premise comes from a great book called Who Not How, where Dr. Benjamin Hardy actually goes into the reason why smart people find the who and that person who knows how to do that. So in the example that he uses that I love to talk about is Michael Jordan, back to him, didn't know how, didn't need to know how to be a better basketball player. He was the greatest of all time, but he needed Phil Jackson to take him to seven championships. So he can navigate on the court, but he couldn't necessarily put all the pieces together with how to work the team and the strategies from other players and games and so on and so forth. So find your who, and here are your three tips, okay? These are really important. Find the person, go find the coach, whether it's on LinkedIn or certainly by referral, who is somebody whose background is solid. What I mean is that this is not their first rodeo. They've been doing this for a while, and they have success stories to share. You can find somebody who is certified. That is classic coaching. Somebody whose fundamental belief is that you have all the answers inside of you and they will help you pull it out. You can also work with a career strategist, somebody who's more on the tactical end. That's me. I do not have the certifications. I have the 20 plus years of experience in my belt and as a recruiter from Corn Ferry. Second thing that you want to be looking for is somebody who really has a grasp on what it means to be relevant in today's marketplace. Now, a lot of companies will provide outplacement services, and yeah, they, it, it, that's free, and many of them are there to support a mass audience. So if you are somebody who has a desire to pivot or to move or to do things that are going to cut through, this might not be your best bet. And we've had many clients who have come to us and decided, you know what, I have this free service, but it's just not cutting the mustard and have come to work for us and paid out of pocket because they wanted to get to where they wanted to go faster and also earn more money. The last thing I really want you to to honor for yourself, no matter how much money you decide to invest in yourself, 
work with somebody that you can hear. And when I say that, I mean somebody who's not going to sugarcoat it and somebody who's going to give you the information that you need to take you to where you need to go. But that is a gut check. You absolutely want to make sure that you are finding and listening to the person that you can trust. This is a trust venture because a lot is riding on this. And also, you want to be building a relationship with somebody who is going to be with you in and out of the trenches, the good days, the bad days, and support you and really help you along the tacks and the twists and the ups and the downs. So trust is so paramount. We're going to go back to the badge for a minute, right? So when you are thinking about yourself and quote unquote, never having to to look for a job before, let's reframe this. Let's use this time. And I say let's because we are always, always, always your partner in crime and in Thrive. So what I mean by this is it's not about you and checking a box for a job. Not if you're an executive, because what we hear along with, I've never had to look for a job before, are the following. I want a seat at the table. I want to work with an innovative company. I want to work with a mission-based organization. I want to work in a culture where people care. I am done being a road warrior. And Lauren, can you help me to get back to skipping to work on Mondays? I hear that plea on a regular basis. Maybe not exactly verbatim, but the sentiment is there. If that's what you're looking for, I promise you, I promise you with all the love in my heart, it exists, but it won't exist without you putting some navigation together. And the navigation doesn't live on a job board. It doesn't live in some recruiter's head or in their job queues. It lives in you. So if you haven't looked for a job before, now is a great time, an important time, a vital time to lock down what it is that you want, what the future of you is, the 2024 version, the you 3.0. I recently had a guy come to me and he says, you know what? I'm Bill 3.0. And I was like, let's go, right? Rename yourself, whatever it is, 4.0, 10.0, whatever that is, doesn't matter how many iterations, because guess what? Even if you've never looked for a job before, this probably won't be your last time because the turnover in the C-suite is at its fastest rate it's ever been, 40 months for a CMO. That's it. So the likelihood of you going through this process again is high and probable. And that's okay. You're going to learn these things and you will use them and reuse them and you will use them in your next, your next positions that I promise you. So get clear. We call it the navigation blueprint. And that includes your why statement, your values, and your top skills. I mean, the ones that you really want to hone in on. Let's just talk about skills for a minute, okay? Skills are critical. And those, again, are expected at your level. It's expected that you have, you know, strong skills, let's just call it in data or in communication or, or any of the core elements to your respective function. You are not going to get hired on your skills alone. And you are not going to get hired because of your certifications. All of those, they're good. But remember, you are on the A team, which means that everybody at your level 
is a varsity player. And a lot of those skills and a lot of those certifications or even, you know, the the places that you've gone to school and, you know, even advanced degrees are easily commoditized because at this level, everyone has them. So differentiating yourself, I know people talk about that all the time, but I'm talking about the real stuff. I'm talking about even the goofy stuff. I saw somebody today on LinkedIn. I just had to laugh. She said in her headline, the year of yes was part of her headline. Now that is a scroll stopper. So start getting clear on what it is that you do that no one else can do. And that is there. Trust me. And if you, if you don't know where it is, give us a call. I, we will find it. Trust me. We have. And we will. So skills, important. Yes. And as you are approaching your search for, let's just say the first time or, you know, the long, long, long time you're coming back and it just feels like you are in a place that you do not recognize. You are not alone. So let's talk about what it is that you need to think about as you are encroaching in a new adventure. First and foremost, let's get you relevant. What is relevant? Relevant can be of the moment. Relevant can mean that you are upskilled so that you are able to coexist in a world that is now complex, especially in in the work environment. Five generations, five, yeah, a whole handful are currently in the world of work. And this is the first time ever that that has happened. So no matter where you are, You're going to need to converse with multiple age groups, ethnicities, all kinds of diversity. And so let's get hip to that. One of the things that we do also at Portfolio Rocket is we are constantly working on not becoming an AI master. That's not the goal here, but having enough tools and tips and tricks to be able to weave it into conversation and also to be able to help overcome any of the stinky perceptions about ageism or not being able to compete because you're not necessarily familiar with today's technology. And that's vital. Also, let's counter the whole technology piece and get back to some of the most ancient basics there are, which includes storytelling and narrative. Data don't do nothing unless there is a story. So enough, enough with the just spewing that out. Let's get stories around it because 70% of what we remember is through storytelling. And stories, as you know, I'll throw in the data, are at least 27% more memorable than just the wah, 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 wah by itself. So we want you to be relevant, relevant. Of course, that includes anything and everything that you do on LinkedIn. And we're just going to take a little sidestep right now and move over into some personal branding and thought leadership because those will speak for you even when your lips are locked. In other words, let you brand, tell the story for people who have no clue about you so that you can start building that flywheel of no like, and trust. So most people who come to find me, it's not like they've never talked to me before, or seen a post that I've done, or met me through an organization. Those relationships have been built over time, and they've been built 
every day that I'm posting on LinkedIn or commenting or supporting people in the DMs. I'm not a ghost and you aren't either unless you want to go into hiding, which I strongly, strongly do not recommend. One of the biggest issues that we see is that too many executives confuse their reputation with visibility. The world is just too noisy for people to remember back. Oh, yeah, I remember Sue. She knew how to orchestrate all those inconsistent merger criteria and and, and make it happen. No. Visibility is vital for you to be able to stay top of mind. Your reputation, yes, but build on it. Don't bury it. Let people know. If they don't know, it's only because you haven't shared that with them or certainly shared it with them recently. Say something. Use your voice. How is it? that you have 20 years of experience, and then you come and tell me, I don't have anything important to say. God, no, please get some, get some thought leadership out there. And thought leadership isn't like all haughty. Okay. People who write books also, by the way, are thought leaders, people who are on podcasts, thought leaders, but anything, anything, even if it's a slow start, Don't even sweat about it. You can do this. You can absolutely do this and you must do it. Yeah, I am saying that because you have, if you are looking to earn a seat at the table, no better time to start. Sit at your own table, bring your own meal, grab a couple chairs. Let's go. So we talked about. Relevancy. We talked about branding and thought leadership. And now, by golly, let's build some relationships. Let's build it. I don't care if you don't like the word networking, as my friend Kevin D. Turner will say, networking beats not working. And so get over it, not because it's a punishment, because it it is a pleasure to be able to help and source new relationships and connect them. You've probably heard of the following, which is called, you know, your weak links are your strongest ties. Like I did not invent that. It comes from Mark Granzavetter back in the day of Stanford in the 1970s. It's as old as dirt. And that theory goes like this. It's not the people that you already know. Because those people, when you are looking for work and you're looking for your new job, they are carrying baggage, right? Good baggage, bad baggage, whatever it is, the bags get heavy. And the point is that they have a preconceived notion of who you are and what you do and how you operate. In order for new relationships to come in, you got to go outside of that pre existing group. Otherwise, You'll be drinking a lot of dirty bath water and that doesn't taste so good. So building relationships outside of that brings me to my next area of networking, which is called clustering. Clustering is not that complicated, trust me. It's basically when you are bringing together people from two different groups, right? But you're the broker in between. So you know these people over at the gym and you know these people from your kid's school. You know these people from this professional organization, and you know these people from LinkedIn. So you can mix and match. As long as you are brokering, you are building. You are building not just for yourself, but you are building goodwill. And man, you are going to be not just so appreciated, but it will feel good inside. And that dignity and self-respect that you are helping somebody else can go with you and, and sustain you for hours and maybe even days or weeks at a time. I certainly know that it does for me. 
because I love connecting people, people with each other. And if I know somebody who's really strong in this area, or I see an article that is really useful for somebody else, yeah, send it to them. Don't sit on the sidelines because there's a million free things that you can do. And if you're stuck and don't know what they are, I'll help you. So we're going to wrap up this episode and I'm going to ask you, if you haven't looked before for a job and you are now in the market, how are you going to approach it so that when first quarter comes around, because it's coming, you have some good strategies and a great mindset behind it. So use this time to lock down some of the things that we talked about. I'm just going to repeat them, right? First question I asked was, is having never looked for a job before a badge of honor or is it a boulder? And I don't know what it is for you. I think it's a combination of both the badge boulder or, you know, the triumph or the trap. So wherever you land on this, insert a healthy dose of humility because neither one of them is going to necessarily win out. And humility isn't that you are humiliated. Humility is that you have the courage to say, I don't know what I don't know, but I'm certainly all in on finding somebody or a group of people who are going to support me as I embark on this, on this process. So ask yourself that question and then eat your dose of humble pie because crow tastes a lot better when it's served warm and that's okay. That's okay. That's, that's, that's actually a very uh, strong sign of character. And I mean that because, trust me, I've eaten a lot of humble pie. And I did it both while I was looking for work and while I was creating this company. And I take a healthy dose every day because I, there's a million things I don't know and I need some right sizing too. The second is strive for relevancy. Strive for relevancy in everything that you are doing in your search. Do not approach your search with landline thinking. Oh, I've got to, you know, go through the job boards or I've got to go through, you know, fixating on my resume for three weeks. No, no. Relevant, relevant. And use chat too, because chat can be amazing at simplifying workflows and also giving you tons of ideas. The next thing we talked about is personal branding and thought leadership. So what is that all about? You know, your brand speaks for you when you're not in the room. So as the brand, your brand is developing, don't sweat the small stuff. In other words, what I mean by that is it's not going to be perfect, but keep on going. And then the last thing we talked about was also the ability to build relationships, to build that pipeline, not just for today and tomorrow and not transactionally. Please don't do that. That's usury behavior. Please don't do that. Build relationships where you are going outside of your immediate network and you're also brokering or clustering so that you're pulling together people from disparate groups to build that network. I hope I hope this gives you some good holiday fuel. I'm thinking about you. I'm loving on you because that's just the joy that I have in being able to speak to you from ear to ear and share with you some of the thoughts that I had with respect to Badger Boulder and also let you know that we are all in. So if you like this episode, pass it along to a friend, somebody that might need a a loving ear or an earful. And also we would love it. I say we, because my team and I are like obsessed with building this podcast and we are watching the reviews and we would appreciate so much 
if you would write one, if you got something out of this episode, and also if you are able to take this and put it into action, we would be delighted. So signing off for now. Enjoy these weeks ready to come. All right, let's go. Thank you for joining today. We appreciate your listening ears. Big time. We ask this. Use these tools, not tomorrow, right now, and share them by spreading the love. Leaving us a rating and subscribe so you don't miss the next career blast in a half. Most of all, thank you for you.